against the Constitution, um, uh, the, you know, sending uh, an angry, violent mob to disrupt proceedings at the Capitol uh, cannot, cannot stand. Um, when you say sending, certainly... sending a mob, who do you believe is responsible? Who sent the mob? Look, I, the President of the United States uh, called his supporters to Washington. That was Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney speaking earlier today, calling out the mob that was sent to Capitol Hill by the president and his acolytes. The joint session of Congress is now reconvened and resuming their constitutional duty to count the Electoral College vote. Hours after a mob of Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol, and several House Democrats now want to take steps to remove President Trump in his final days in office for his role in today's violence. Nineteen of them are calling on Vice President Mike Pence to initiate 25th Amendment proceedings against Donald J. Trump. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar said on Twitter that she's drawing up new articles of impeachment as a matter of preserving our republic. Her fellow squad member, Ayanna Presley, also called for Trump's impeachment today. But with two weeks left until Inauguration Day, how far will these efforts go? Joining me now is a freshman member of the new Congress, Representative Mondaire Jones of New York. Congressman, thanks for coming on the show. First off, thank you for coming on a day like today. I hope you're safe and well. What was that like? Uh, a new member of the House. I don't think you expected your first week in Congress to go down like this, did you? You know, I expected to be fighting on behalf of the American people, uh, but I did not expect to be preparing myself for physical fighting uh, against domestic terrorists who were able to storm the Capitol and nearly stormed the House chamber, where I and approximately 200 other members of Congress were located, uh, you know, so early on and, and, and using my bare hands. I mean, thankfully, thankfully, we were evacuated before that before that happened, but I've got to tell you, uh, I'm angry. Uh, the worry that I felt in that moment, that the fear for my life has now changed, has, has now become fury. Uh, I am furious at House Republicans. Uh, you noted earlier that over 100 of my Republican colleagues in the House of Representatives alone uh, voted to reject the electoral votes from the state of Arizona for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. That is unconscionable. Uh, and of course, this myth of voter fraud uh, is precisely what helped to lead to these dozens of domestic terrorists taking over the Capitol building today and putting everyone's life at risk. So just to be clear, you believe that the 100 plus members of the House, the six Republican senators who still voted tonight to try and overturn Arizona's result for a start, that they are responsible for their, they have a role to play in terms of taking responsibility for this attack on Capitol Hill today. They are absolutely responsible. They are co-conspirators in sedition, along with the president of the United States, who, of course, has been the, the cheerleader, the main cheerleader uh, for the violent insurrection uh, that, that we saw attempted today. Uh, you know, what happened today is never supposed to happen. Uh, what is happening right now, where, where Senator Hawley is, is, going to, is ex saying that he's going to be objecting to Pennsylvania. Uh, is not supposed to happen. This is a routine certification of a free and fair election. Uh, there was no voter fraud. And to the extent there was, and to the extent there was voter suppression, it was of black and brown voters in places like Georgia who were Democratic voters. Um, and, and it's just so shameful what's happening. It's why I've called uh, for the expulsion of my Republican colleagues who have participated in, this, in these objections. Uh, it is why I have agreed to co-sponsor articles of impeachment of this president. I share the view that regardless of how many weeks we've got left in his, t in his tenure, we have to send a very powerful message to the world, to Trump himself, and to the other Donald Trumps in the Republican Party who want to run for president and, uh, and for Congress in the years to come, that there will be consequences for back. unlawful... I do want to come back to the... I want to come back to the impeachment in a moment. Take a break for two seconds, uh, Congressman. We're going to listen to Elizabeth Warren speaking on the floor right now, and we'll come back to you in just a moment. Well, bodies pile up in the morgue. Instead, they elected a new president who wants to save lives, to save our economy, and to save our democracy. Even as the pandemic raged, 
Americans showed up for democracy. States worked overtime to set up safe systems, ballot drop boxes and early voting and gallons of hand sanitizer. Voters mailed their ballots earlier, put on masks and stood in line at the polls. The election of 2020 shattered voting records. So here we are on the floor of the United States Senate in the aftermath of an historic election held in the middle of a pandemic. People are suffering and we should be working to get them the help they need. Instead, we are here because Donald Trump wants to overturn the results of that election. The Republicans objecting to the results of this election will be judged by history. But the rest of us will be judged as well. It is our responsibility to stand up for our democracy, even while other senators work to undermine it. Losing is hard. I ran for president myself. It was a hard-fought primary. But Joe Biden won, and I lost. I am not the only one to live through that. A number of senators in this room have run for president. None of us was successful. And when we lost, we conceded and we got out of the race because that is how democracy works. None of us lied about the results. We didn't throw temper tantrums. We didn't tell our allies in Congress or the states to overturn the results. We didn't feed poisonous propaganda to our supporters. We didn't urge people so that to is march Senator on Senator Elizabeth state Warren capitals. there uh, slamming Trump and the Republican Party's efforts to overturn the election. Uh, Congressman uh, Mondaire Jones is still with me. Senator Warren there talking about standing up for democracy, you know, taking a stand so that history judges even people, not just the people who tried to overturn democracy, but those who tried to defend it. You talk about impeaching the president again as part of that stand. And a lot of people will say, yes, that needs to happen. But what do you say to someone like your uh, Democratic uh, congressional colleague from California, Brad Sherman, who I was speaking to earlier in the evening? He said, look, it would just be a symbolic thing. It wouldn't achieve anything, and there's not enough time for it. What do you say to him? Well, respectfully to my colleague, there must be consequences uh, the, to me, the symbol of doing nothing at all, uh, abdicating our constitutional prerogative to be a check on the executive branch of government and to role model good behavior for the American people writ large and for the, and for the world uh, is a symbol of massive failure on the part of Congress. And so I would rather act and send a message uh, that this will not be tolerated moving forward. You know, what Senator Warren just said was brilliant, as always. Uh, specifically, she made the observation that a number of senators uh, themselves uh, have lost in presidential primaries. One of those senators, of course, one of the greatest losers uh, was, was Ted Cruz, who is now one of the only six senators who are, who's ob objecting to, um, to the electoral votes from the state of Arizona. Uh, he should know better. He knows what it's like to lose. He knows what, it, he knows what it's like to move on. Uh, and, and he should be modeling good behavior. But alas, he is working to undermine our democracy. And so people like him yes, have yes. to be expelled from the Senate and, and from the House of Representatives for his Republican counterparts, of which there are more than 100. Indeed. Uh, and I want to play to you another clip from another progressive senator who's speaking tonight, Ed Markey. Um, have a listen to what he said tonight. So while time is certainly limited, we should impeach Trump again and bar him from holding office in the future. And finally, we should abolish the Electoral College. It is a vestige of a racist Jim Crow America, and we have outgrown it. Every person's vote in every state should count just the same. One person, one vote. Congressman, here's a question for you. Uh, you've got abolished the Electoral College, which is popular with the public. You've got calls uh, to, for D.C. statehood. Uh, you've got calls for other reforms to American democracy, basically making it more democratic, making it easier to vote, making it fairer. A lot of radical, what some might call radical, some say they're not radical at all, proposals on the table, and now you've won back the Senate. Today, NBC News projecting John Ossoff defeated uh, David Perdue in Georgia. Do you think a Senate majority, a narrow one, Kamala Harris as the, as the swing voter, as the, as the crucial 51st vote, 
will it actually embrace some of these radical proposals or will it just defer to the Joe Manchins and Kirsten Cinemas of this world? How progressive will this new Democratic-led Senate be? Well, Joe Manchin is supportive of the For the People Act, uh, which you will see House Democrats uh, and Senate Democrats pass and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris uh, enact into law. It is a set of robust democracy reforms, uh, including automatic voter registration to enfranchise an additional 50 million people nationally, and end to the partisan gerrymandering of congressional districts. You just noted that over 100 Republican House members voted to reject the Arizona electoral votes. We will get better people in Congress when independent redistricting commissions draw these congressional lines oh, yes. and people have to compete in general election contests and still be responsive to the electorate rather than coasting the victory after prevailing in their primaries. Uh, and of course, that will also ensure that people of good conscience continue uh, to run the House of Representatives in this modern society. Those people are Democrats. And Congressman, you've mentioned a couple of times tonight, you know, taking a strong move to really hold the GOP accountable for what they've done tonight and today. Uh, you and I think uh, your fellow freshman uh, Democrat Congresswoman Cori Bush are uh, calling for these Republican colleagues to be expelled, to not be allowed to be seated. Do you worry, on the one hand, it's the kind of tough measure that many would say Democrats need to take to draw a line in the sand, to defend small d democracy. On the other hand, won't that just play into the whole Republican victim narrative, the idea that they won't let us win elections, they won't let us sit in Congress, the wailing that we're hearing from some in the GOP? No, you know, Republicans will manufacture myths uh, so long as they're able to continue to have a platform, uh, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, such a champion of these democracy reforms, repairing our democracy, making sure that, um, that you know, the, the, the vast majority of state legislatures uh, which are Republican controlled, but, uh, are not able to to dilute the votes of Americans uh, and and allow QAnon adherents to get elected in mass to the United States Congress. Uh, we have to get rid of these people. It's why I'm supportive of Cory Bush's resolution uh, to expel these folks. You know, you got a lot of folks who just want to pretend like they didn't do anything. They want to act like now that the the protesters and the domestic terrorists have uh, been expelled from safely <laughs> from the Capitol. Imagine these, if these protesters were black, by the way, uh, that we can just get back to normal. But no, there must be accountability for what happened. Uh, everyone who has participated in this myth uh, must know that what they did was unacceptable. And so at a minimum, we should be censuring them. Uh, and I also support expelling them as members of Congress. Uh, just before we run out of time, I have to ask you, you mentioned just now, imagine if they were black. And it's a question I've asked all night long. If those protesters were black, if they were brown, if they were Muslim, Capitol Police, they would have treated them very differently, wouldn't they? They would have been gunned down before they got to the Capitol. Uh, I mean, you cannot make this stuff up. I've, I've at this point seen footage of uh, law enforcement officers posing with these people uh, for selfies. I I've seen other footage. Uh, as, as have many people online, of uh, barricades being removed so that the mob of uh, domestic terrorists uh, could actually get closer to the Capitol. Uh, and, and so we have to undertake, the House of Representatives has to undertake a full and exhaustive investigation of the security breaches that occurred, why they happened, because they were completely preventable. Uh, there was ample notice about the size of the crowd that would exist, uh, about the, the, what was at stake. I mean, we were literally on the House floor, hundreds of us, to certify a presidential election. I mean, could there ever be anything more high stakes than that? Uh, and yet you had yep. dozens of domestic terrorists al being allowed to take over the Capitol building. It's like something out of a banana republic. Indeed it is. Congressman and uh, uh, Congressman Mondaire Jones, thank you so much for your time. Uh, quite a time to get into politics, uh, but I'm glad you're safe and well, and thank you for joining us tonight. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen, and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.